So if everything went really, really well on your last part, uh, you were able to determine that the system is in good working order, clean, and everything is operating fine. But chances are you're going to find several items that may be in need of remediation and need to be addressed prior to the unit going back into operation. Uh, this part is going to focus specifically on the component. Items like filters, cabinet surfaces, and materials, those would all be addressed by consulting the cabinet manufacturer. In terms of component remediation, there really are two items to discuss, cleaning and service. Cleaning is going to be the focus of this part of the discussion and, and generally what is going to be required in most cases. If you find that the component is in need of servicing, like a new seal or motor, or even if the entire assembly needs to be replaced, um, this includes wheels that are made by us or others, uh, we can assist with that, but it's better discussed on a case-by-case -case basis. A clean component is absolutely critical to the proper operation of the system and the efficacy of the ventilation system. If you believe the system has been exposed to virus-laden aerosols or has been shut down for a period of time, or really if the wheels never been cleaned ever, out of abundance of caution, it's probably in the best interest of the occupants to properly clean before occupancy. So the air exchange cleaning process was de developed over 40 years ago when we first came to market. And it was meant to be part of your normal maintenance procedure. It wasn't developed in response to any particular crisis, but out of a general need to keep the device operating properly. It was intended to remove dirt, dust, oily residue, and even some biological contaminants if present on the surface. Starting with the materials you need to clean. First, you'll need a tub or container large enough to fit the energy transfer segments in. Uh, keep in mind, you'll need to fully submerge these segments in the solution. Uh, if you're unsure what size container to get, uh, we have developed a chart that gives you some guidance based on our different segment sizes. This chart, along with some of the other items I'm going to discuss, is in our cleaning and disinfecting document. You'll need either a non-acid based coil cleaner, like an evaporator cleaner, or any common type of dish soap or detergent like Dawn. You'll need access to a water or a hose, a soft brush or a vacuum to remove any dirt, a flat header screwdriver to disengage the perimeter clips and for some of our larger segments you'll need an allen key to remove the nose bolt that attaches the segment to the hub. In order to clean the segments you first have to remove them from the stainless steel wheel. To make this processor easier for everyone we have developed videos on our website that demonstrate it by wheel size. Uh, prior to wetting the segment, you can brush any visible dirt or debris off the face of the wheel. Uh, you can also use a vacuum to do this part as well. In the tub, you're going to want to mix a, either a 5% solution of coil cleaner or a half to 1% solution of soap or detergent. Uh, for reference, if you're using a 30 gallon tub, that would equate to 1.5 gallons of diluted coil cleaner. Mix the water thoroughly so you have a good homogeneous solution. You're going to want to fully submerge the segments in the soapy solution. Uh, please keep in mind that you can submerge multiple segments at a time to help cut down on the overall cleaning time required. To get a good clean, you're going to want to let the segments soak for as long as they possibly can. In the majority of the buildings, this could be several minutes. However, in certain applications where there's uh, cigarette-laden air or any type of oils or aerosols, you may need to let it soak for several hours. You would then Remove the segments one at a time. You're going to shake them vigorously of any excess water on them and then use a regular hose to rinse free any remaining soap or debris. So after you perform the cleaning process, uh, you can store the segments to make sure that they are properly dry. Uh, however, if you don't have the ability to store the segments for any foreseeable time, uh, you can use the air handler as a means to dry. What you'd want to do is you'd want to replace the segments back into the stainless steel wheel and turn on the exhaust fan only. And what you're gonna do is gonna let the air handler dry them out for you. Uh, if this is located in an outdoor air unit where you may open a uh, cabinet door upstream of the wheel, I would suggest you do that as that's going to minimize the likelihood of any negative pressure inside the space. And really, depending on how wet the segments were when you replace them back into the unit, it may take 30 to 45 minutes for them to completely dry. Okay, so that was a lot of information to go over. Um, so I really wanted to demonstrate that everything that I spoke about here is located on our website at airexchange.com. 
the, the items in particular that I wanted to highlight um, are as follows. So the first is the Air Exchange Operation and Maintenance Manual. Uh, the O&M manual discusses the segment removal process as well as the resetting of seals, uh, followed by the Energy Recovery Best Practices During Pandemic document. Uh, this discusses the operation and concerns. Uh, then there's the guide for cleaning air exchange wheels. Uh, this covers the last portion of the presentation. And lastly, to supplement all these documents, and because we live in a digital age, uh, we also have live video uh, demonstrating items like the segment removal process and cleaning process that was discussed. And lastly, if you need to get a hold of me, here's my contact information. Uh, feel free to reach out to me with comments on this presentation or any ideas for future presentations. Uh, also, if you just have general questions that need to be answered. Uh, with that being said, I wanted to thank you all for being here once again.